Okay, so um, we're at the job site. We're gonna break down one of our wheel loaders, 16 foot snow pushers, okay? We're gonna dig into the proper use and setup of it. One of the first things that we need to do when we get on the site, if, if it's not already connected, is connect the box. So we take a look here at our setup. So we got D-rings that are welded into the front of the bucket. We've got one chain and binder on here. So what we do is we bring the bucket into the pusher, we get on center. You can see how we have this chain set up where it's linked up here, linked on the other uh, connector, and then the excess is left in the middle. The binder is put right in the middle so that it forces the snow pusher to stay on center with the bucket. You could leave it somewhat loose. When I say loose, I mean um, you can leave a little bit of slack, not much. It's going to move naturally, but tighten it as best as you can without overly tightening it. Okay, you gotta, we got to let the thing move a little bit. Now these shoes or these connectors, these shoes that the bucket goes into right here, okay? You can see them here. There's two, of course. These shoes here, they actually slide up and down. So this pusher, once you lower this pusher and the cutting edge is on the ground, the bucket will be stationary and with the pitch of the asphalt, the snow pusher will ride up and down here. So we want to make sure that when we lower our bucket, we're leaving a little bit of a gap here. We really kind of want it to be on center so that the pusher floats. The pusher is going to float as, as we're working with it. We don't use any down pressure on the bucket, putting down pressure on the pusher. The weight of this pusher right here is enough to scrape the snow, okay? These pushers also, if you back up enough and take a look down at the bottom, these pushers right here, they've got steel cutting edges and they're trip edges. So these spring assist systems, that's your trip edge. They trip back. This pusher will actually scrape um, like the cutting edge of a truck. Uh, but what's nice is that it's a box and you've got the sides so that it can carry snow. All right, so just to recap real quick of what we looked at is, we looked at the proper way to set up the chain and binder and we looked at, looked at the uh, proper height to make sure that our bucket is in a float position so that this, push, this pusher can move up and down based on the pitch of the terrain. Even though we're on asphalt, you know, it's graded in a certain way for drainage, okay? Another thing that we want to look at is by looking at the front, you can see that the cutting edge is on the ground. It's, re it's really, it's ready to scrape, you can see that. And on this side of our, our box over here, if you accompany me over here, you'll take a look at the, um, the shoe on the left uh, wing of the box. And you can see how that shoe right there it's flat on the surface of the asphalt. Now, if an operator is not settling this pusher down properly, not adjusting it properly, what'll happen is, is that they will actually wear off maybe the back end or the front end of a shoe. A shoe should wear evenly, which means it's being lowered evenly. So that has to do with your bucket here. You'll notice that the bucket, it's pretty much straight. There's no need to go into the pusher when you connect to it and curl the bucket up. That actually will put some pressure on the shoe. So it would look like this. If I put my bucket into the pusher like this and curled up, now I'm putting pressure on the lower part of the connector shoe and they'll shear off. So you wanna come in straight and simply lift up and down with the bucket. So you can see that this bucket is straight. The operator did a nice job of not rotating that bucket up or down. So there's no pressure on the lower side of this shoe that's down here, okay? So he simply gets in his machine and he raises and lowers. That's the main function. He may adjust from time to time because inevitably with hydraulics, you may need to make adjustments, but he's raising and he's lowering. Let's take a look at the next step of using our wheel loader here. Now. The operation of the wheel loader itself is covered in another training video, which you probably already have watched or should have watched. Um, but when we're working with the wheel loaders, where are we using this type of equipment? Well, we're using it in big wide open areas and essentially we're using it to carry snow and to move snow or push snow to snow loading zones. So if you look down here with me, you'll see a big pile at this end of the parking lot. And if you look behind you, you'll see another pile here in the center of the parking lot. I'm gonna take you with me over here. And you're gonna look at the far end of the parking lot and you'll see a loading zone. And the thought and the idea of this is, is that as I'm going down the lane, if I'm, as I'm pushing with that box down the lane, I'm gonna take that snow and cart it to a loading zone. 
Now I don't want one loading zone, I want to have various ones so that my distance as I'm carrying a full box from point A to point B isn't so far because time is money. So I'm taking that box down and I'm dumping. Then I'm going to turn around and come back again, dropping my bucket and I'm going to dump probably in the middle. And then I'm going to back out of that and I'm going to drop my box again and I'm going to take it to the next loading zone. Loading zones are always away from buildings. They are never up against the building. They are also never put in a place where they can damage a fence. So if you look down at this loading zone, it's in a parking area. It's not up into the grass pushed into the fence. Go ahead and zoom in on that real quick, please. So it's very important we don't push the snow up so far that it, it um, damages fences or anything else for that matter, okay? If snow does really need to be moved to that degree, then we're gonna come in and relocate it. That's a separate uh, service and function of the job. So let's do this for a moment. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna watch our operators actually work with the equipment. So we're gonna look for those characteristics of moving the snow efficiently, taking it to loading zones, uh, making sure that the pitch of the bucket is proper. It's not going into that shoe and, and twist it up. It simply goes in and he's raising and lowering the pusher. He's gonna lower that pusher down so the cutting edge hits the surface level and he's gonna lower it down in a way that it's able to float. So that pusher can move up and down and float with the surface of the ground. First of all, I'd like to point out that if you saw the operator and you'll see him in different clips in the video, he's got his high vis on. Uh, so if you're just because you're in a machine doesn't mean that you're not wearing your safety gear, okay? You're wearing high vis. If you get out of the machine, you need to be seen. If you're in the machine, you need to be seen. We need to know it's, we need to know it's one of our guys. Go ahead and check him out here running along the side of the building here. He's going to start cutting down this parking lot, okay? Now, you'll notice he's not getting right up near the building because, well, that would be dangerous and it could also potentially cause an accident or damage. So what he's doing is he's kind of wrapping himself around. He's going to get as close as he's, he can. And as he goes, he'll be filling his box and you're going to see him jet out to, a, to one of those loading zones that I was pointing out uh, earlier in the video. So there he goes. He's going to go off to his loading zone. He's bringing a full box out there. Again, he's lifting that box up. And uh, th th these piles here actually are older piles. So they have a lot of ice in them. So you could see he's not pushing right into that pile because frankly, it's a block of ice. So we're gonna watch him. He's gonna move through this area. He's gonna work his way from the building out. We never pile snow against buildings, as I said before. From the building out, pushing it all out. Um, at times, we'll have a truck working in tandem with a loader. If a truck is working in tandem with you, the truck will be focused on bringing that snow out so that you, the loader operator, can grab it in the box and take it to the loading zone. When you're plowing or you're moving snow with a box, in this case, this is a training video for utilizing a wheel loader with a box. There's a principle, ABP, always be plowing, ABP, okay? So what that means is, is that you might think to yourself, well, what if I took a straight run down this tarmac and then, you know, you turn around and you come back and take another run? You're not doing that. Every time you empty your snow pusher, you're turning around, you're dropping it, and you're going to start pushing snow again. In fact, you might even find that you do some type of weird figure eights or, or something when you're clearing off a lot. It may work out that way, but the idea is to ABP, always be plowing. You have your plow on the ground, you're collecting snow, you're moving it to the nearest loading zone it'll allow you to cover a lot, a lot faster, a parking lot, a lot faster than if you're trying to get this nice, clean, straight pattern down. With a plow truck, it is a little bit different because you're not moving snow with the plow truck like a box. You're just curling it from one side to the next. So it's different with a plow truck. Yes, you might set up a more clear pattern than you will with a box where you're really uh, taking a parking lot and you're moving straight across it. But with a box, you're trying to move snow. You're moving volume of snow. And that, when that box gets full, it's done. It's, there's nothing else to be done except for take it to a loading zone. So you'll see the operator working, and he is ABP. He is he always be plowing. He is always plowing. Every time he's, he's moving, that thing is on the ground. That box is on the ground, 
and he's gonna cut into a snow loading zone. He's not gonna finish coming down here with that box. It's already full. There's no point. ABP, always be plowing. See how he put it down already? Do you see at that moment how he just, as soon as he came back out of that loading zone, he dropped his box. That means that he is already working. There's no downtime. He's not setting up to drop his box again. Okay, now it's one thing to be working in an area where there's not a lot of trailers. And we started here with the training video just because it's a lot easier because there aren't trailers lined up against this building. This building actually happens to be um, under interior fit out. So once it's completed, this will be populated with trailers. So let's, um, let's go to an area that has trailers and we'll show you another operator um, who's very skilled working in and around a lot of obstacles. Oh, we see our operator here. He's actually working in between trailers. Now, you can see from the shot, there's a trailer there, there's an obstacle there. But if you look back here with me, follow me here, I've got a trailer here. Now this is a little bit of a wider area, but what the operator is attempting to do is he's carving. He's gonna carve that snow out. You see him push it out and really get it out into the tarmac. And he's gonna leave it here, out into the, I call it the tarmac, but you know, we could call this the center lane. You could call it that. You have to be mindful that there's gonna be other equipment around. Maybe not right next to you. If you look off in the distance over there, we've got another wheel loader working right up there. Got another operator up there. This particular site has at least three, sometimes four wheel loaders, plus backhoes, plus skid steers, and of course, plow trucks. So we're gonna be careful working, um, not just around fixed obstacles, but also all the other equipment that's working around you. What I liked about what he's doing right here is that if you saw him go into that pile, he didn't hit that really hard. He just eased into it because he didn't want that snow to just blow all over the place. He's trying to move that snow. He's trying to move it to a loading zone. So you saw him ease into that pile. You, you got to be able to use the equipment in such a way that it's being efficient. I have Joe Tucker here, one of our heavy equipment operators. We're just going to talk with him for a few minutes on some tips um, on his thoughts of utilizing this particular wheel loader, the case uh, wheel loader with uh, our 16 foot um, boss uh, box that, with, with, that has a steel cutting edge, a trip edge. So Joe, any um, particular observations with the machine and the box combo? What do you like about it? What's challenging with it? What, what, do, you, what do you think? Uh, personally, what you got to think about is how much you're pushing because at some point um, you're hurting yourself, you're pushing so much that you're putting out big windrows and uh, you have to come back and that's time spent doing little work that could be doing a full pass or just cleaning up these little tiny strips. Uh, it's not ideal. It's a lot better if you're getting a full bite on, uh, I mean, utilizing the entire box. But uh, with the loader itself, I mean, loaders have come a very long way and these are great because you have great visibility. You can see everything around you. Um, there is a camera that's amazing in it, but at the same time, I still look at my mirrors. I still look behind me. I don't trust cameras 100%, I never will. But it is very, very helpful to have, uh, especially when you're running around other people and there's people walking around. You have other people uh, pushing snow with snow shovels. You have people with snow blowers. It's definitely a visibility thing. Um, safety always comes first, especially when working around someone because that machine doesn't care if you're a piece of snow or you're a person. It's pushing you no matter what happens. For sure. In terms of using the box and getting the box adjusted, anything in particular that you... Um, would, would give us advice to other operators to get this box adjusted properly, use it, utilize it properly? Well, when, when you're pushing, um, when you're getting it adjusted correctly, you could see what's coming out underneath it. You want, obviously, as minimal snow coming out of the bottom as physically possible. Mm -hmm. So you could adjust uh, the tilt, which that's how you adjust is the tilt of the bucket to, uh, to get a better clearance on the ground. And then once you have that clearance on the ground where you're tilted to the right direction, all you really have to do is up and down. You don't have to tilt back unless when you're pushing up snow on a pile, but otherwise it's up and down. Once you have that adjusted and you have it pretty well dialed in, you can keep it like that pretty much all night as long as you're not going crazy pushing up. Okay. All right, let's talk about one thing since we're talking about tilt. Um, let's go to the back real quick. So the way, the way that it's set up right now, your bucket's pretty much straight in and it's flush on the ground. Yeah. We do want to be careful when we're inside of the shoes that we're not 
tilting while it's on the ground. Yes. Because then we can put pressure on what? What's underneath there? That's the bottom part of that shoe, right? Yes, and you could very easily snap it off if right. you don't know what you're doing. Right, exactly. So that's something I think is important for operators. So how do they work? How do you feel that these boxes work? They work better than anything I've ever used for clearing snow. Um, the bottom on the cutting edge are spring-loaded, so when you hit something, you're not going through the windshield of the machine. Um, you're obviously not ripping the cutting edge off. Have you ever gone? Have you ever gone through the windshield of a machine? No. Okay, good. No. Okay. Cut. No. Just <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, uh, they they give way. Yes. Um, and that way, it, it puts a lot less wear and tear on the actual box itself. Uh, you're not jostling every component of it around. Uh, the only thing that'll be moving would be the bottom cutting edge. So when you do hit a small lip or a small little bump, they will fold back and they'll reset themselves as you continue on. That's good. That's great. Well, I'm glad that you like it. We like it. Um, if it's used properly, it's a heck of a tool. Definitely a great machine. Why don't you? Why don't we take a look? Joe will show us where where we fuel this particular machine, <clears throat> and just some of the maintenance checks that we do during a storm as we go. Um, why don't we take a look at that? Some of this was covered in in the training video you you've already watched about the general operation of the machine. We're just going to take a look at fueling, just because we're in storm and fueling is part of an in storm uh, uh, maintenance issue. So go ahead. We're going to flip up. It's also where the uh, master switch is uh, located to shut off the power of the machine so it doesn't die. Okay. But it's a up position and it will uh, hydraulically raise the hood. It's a lot better than um, putting a lot of wear and tear on yourself lifting up like that. All right. Okay, and so our fuel point, the machine's running. Sorry for the noise, but that's okay. That's part of our job. The fuel point is where? Where's our, our fueling? Located on the passenger side of the engine, right beneath the uh, engine oil fill. It's recessed down a little bit, so you do have to look down to see it. So it's down here? Yeah. Okay. All right, so there's our fuel point right here. And um, obviously the fuel that we're going to use is diesel. And it's going to be treated diesel because it's, it's, it's cold out. So we're going to make sure that it comes from an approved container that's treated so we don't get gel in our fuel, all right? Why don't we go ahead and flip that lid down there? All right, well, thank you very much, sir. We're gonna let you get back to work safely. Okay.